Welcome to Slow and Steady, the podcast where you get to follow along as you figure out how to build and run a SaaS. I'm Benedict. And I'm Brian. Each week we'll give you an honest peek into our lives as we work on our products and keep the lights on with consulting. Today is October 30th and I am feeling restless. This is episode number 15 and I'm feeling excited. All right. What's that about? Ah, we just made a stupid decision. <laughs> Yay. Uh, did I did I see Jane tease this on Twitter not 30 minutes ago? Yeah, and now she tweeted the reason why we're excited. All right, what is it? Um, we bought userlist.com. Hey, congrats. Uh, just about an hour ago. <laughs> All right. Uh, congrats, man. I'm still man. not sure how to, how to feel about it. It's probably not worth it right now, but... <laughs> No more silly dot io TLD yeah. for you guys. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we just <clears throat> no, we just transferred great, it a couple of minutes ago. All right. Um so nothing's properly set up. It's just redirect to the IO domain for now. But yeah, this uh-huh. is kinda exciting, Ooh. but also maybe one of the more maybe a stupid decision because it it wasn't cheap. <laughs> what do you do you do you mind sharing the price? Or do you want not? Uh, we ended up we ended up buying it for four thousand okay, dollars. Cool. So th- yeah, thanks for thanks for sharing that publicly. That makes conversation a little bit more yeah, I think relatable yeah, and specific. Yeah. So yeah, so I what did so. what did what was the thought process behind that? Why is it worth four thousand dollars? What what what's it all question. what's that all about? <laughs> well, so the domain was on sale the entire time. Um we didn't buy it up to now because yeah, I mean it's not that important, especially not at our stage. But we figured that eventually we want to probably have the .com domain anyway, anyways. And um, at some point, I think a couple of months ago, we just reached out and tried our luck in buying the domain. Mm-hmm. And I think the first offer from them was 21K or something like oh, that. okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was out of the question very soon. And yeah. I, some back and forth over a couple of months. And re- yeah. Basically, during MicroConf, the, the broker follow, followed up again, and we decided, hey, let's let's think about this another one another time, and and, and eventually made an offer for four K, and um, they accepted. Well, that's so, yeah, yeah, we just bought it. That's that's fantastic. I mean, wonderful negotiating. You got them to come down a fifth of the cost, <laughs> so you're clearly <laughs> you've clearly well, won. Yeah. Um, well, okay, so there are a lot of things. Uh, yeah, gosh, I got a bunch of questions about that. So there are a lot of things that you could spend four thousand dollars on. Is the there are a lot of things we could spend the money it, on? Yeah. <laughs> is the uh, so I, what I heard you say in there was you're going to want it eventually. Is the fear that once user lists get some traction, then actually no, that twenty one thousand dollar price tag is either going to hold or go up as they see that you're you're valuable now? Was that the concern? That was one thing that played into this. Yeah, like right now we can. Well, not only pretend we are still small, we're not making a lot of money. So uh, basically being the argument of, yeah, we, we can't afford anything more than this mm-hmm. uh, probably works better than assuming things go well in a couple of years. Um, yeah. And, okay. and there's always the possibility of a competitor buying the domain and doing fun stuff with it. Um, so, yeah. 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 What um, are there? Are there other examples of, of startups that, that came up in your conversations internally? With uh, between you and Jane and Claire about well this this team started or this this startup started out as a .dot io they've remained a .dot io and it's been fine for them or these folks started off as a .dot io they eventually had to buy the .dot com we know it's going to happen like what were the are there any details of that um, yeah it's like I, I, f- I feel like for our particular niche like SaaS applications the .io domain would probably be fine um, because like. People are savvy. It's easy. To, yeah. People are tech savvy, and they. It's not weird to them to have .io yeah. at the end of a domain name. Yeah. Um, so yeah, as I said, it was either a very smart decision and a good deal, or we spent four thousand dollars on vaporware. Essentially, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure about that yet. <laughs> time will time will tell. Where it was time um, will tell. Yeah. I mean, if you're you're super on the fence about it, so it feels like Jane and Claire must have been really pushing for it. I think we all are kind of on the fence about okay. it, but like <laughs> the the thought of hey, if this takes off, like if if user list really works out, the price will probably not go down. Yeah, like it's more likely they will want more. So, and 
I mean, looking at other examples like Segment, for example, they started out as uh, Segment.io and yep. eventually uh, bought it, the .com. Mm -hmm. um, so I figured we will probably do it anyways at some point. And as it was on sale, so it wasn't like we didn't have to convince them to sell it or anything. Uh, we just right. had to negotiate a fair price. So I I guess it was okay, but I mean, then again, it's a lot of money for for our stage. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, congratulations. I mean, uh, or, or, <laughs> thank or, you. Y'all are y'all are excited about it. I hope that it ends up being a a huge savings in the long run. We, we we'll see. see. We we'll see. Yeah. So One thing that also played into it was uh, like, if you want to migrate everything, then better migrate now when there's not as many links and not as many services running on as many subdomains <laughs> maybe maybe moving everything now is easier than yeah. in a couple of years yeah yeah definitely <laughs> yeah you're <laughs> <laughs> you're saving yourself at least that time maybe yeah yeah okay yeah that's it, man th there's so many so many pieces of this whole thing that they're good arguments in either direction I'm sure there are a handful of there there are people who are ah just like why did you do that? you didn't need to do that right now there are a handful of people oh yeah so that is so smart you just you just put twenty thousand dollars in your pocket two years down the road and both of those people are either completely right or completely wrong it's like this Schrodinger time will tell <laughs> thing is, is that am I getting that uh, that thought experiment right um, yeah there's just so many yeah. so many different ways that the whole thing can go. Yeah, yeah. Well, as I said, I'm excited, but I'm. It, it might have been a stupid decision. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we'll keep us, keep us posted. What else is going on? Um, I what what also like. I feel like today is a great day. Um, I made a lot of progress on the the internal message rendering refactoring. All right. Like it finally got to a place where things started to fall in the right place and. Suddenly, doors open that were previously locked. Yeah, and I could implement new stuff that wasn't possible before. So today's a nice day. I'm I'm pretty happy um, about like well the main the domain thing wasn't planned, but uh, that's nice. And uh, the refactoring, I got some decent amount of work done today. I can see it moving into the right direction, and a light at the end of the refactoring tunnel. Um, that will then hopefully allow me to do the uh, in-app messaging more efficiently. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, does it, does it pull any sort of like target target date into into view for you or in within reach? Or? <sighs> I'm not sure. Like I like yeah, I'm a software developer. I don't talk about dates. <laughs> okay. I'm not. I'm not committing to anything. But they it unlocked a couple of things like other features that weren't possible before. Um, and also makes the uh, basically creating in-app messages in our a bit easier, and it's not as much of a mess as it was before. So, mm. yeah, the path forward should be much easier compared to previously. Okay, and is that is that the sort of thing that you're going to be able to? Uh, and forgive me, it's missing things here, but just just to so that I completely understand, like those sorts of improvements, that's the sort of thing that you can start to see benefits of completely separate from from shipping the in-app messenger because it's making things cleaner for you regardless yeah 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 that's that's one thing like um for example we can now do like unsubscribe headers so your email client can display a button uh so you can unsubscribe directly from your email client and stuff like that that mm -hmm. wasn't possible before because of the mess i made <laughs> and we'll finally be able to do previews of rendered emails before we send them out in our editor. So you can basically write an email, use a bunch of placeholders, and um, then pre preview it as it would be delivered to one of the users in your database. Yeah. Um, that feature isn't built yet, but like all the changes made it possible. So that is a lot easier to build now, whereas previously it would require us to create a new model in the database and basically almost sent the email but then not sent the email yeah, yeah. and now the now all the rendering part is abstracted away so i can just like mm -hmm. fire up a new class give it a few params and get a fully rendered email back yeah. out of it yeah yeah is uh is that ability to preview emails before you send them something that uh you have a sense of would would provide more or less value than in-app messaging um i think it's an important improvement on the product itself, like right now, because um, we allow test messages, but 
when you send test messages, we don't know about the context, like there's no user associated with it. So all the liquid um, placeholders that you can put into your email are unpopulated. And with that new change, we can you can say basically get some yeah you can send this as you a can test. basically say uh, preview this message as it would be sent to this user yes, and then we have it. the real data and then you can see okay this this replacement actually puts in the real first name and this mm -hmm. conditional works for this user because they have an, they have some sort of property that influences the message and yeah is that something that users yeah. have is that something users have complained about or requested yes yeah yes it's something that <laughs> that like even i when i when i compose a new message sometimes it would be nice to double check that it's actually oh, doing yeah. the thing that yeah. i hope it will do and like uh I mentioned peter peter zoom in the last episode uh i met him at the microconf and it was the first thing he said hello when will i be able to preview uh emails <laughs> user lists <laughs> Hello. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, well, then, fingers crossed. Okay. So hopefully we can do it soon. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that's that's awesome. So that's that's a good uh good good like development progress for you. How yeah. how are you going to how are you going to think through um do you do you uh push push through and finish in app messaging or do you deliver this ability now to preview messages because of these other improve or yeah yeah because of these other improvements you've made now we can quickly you know, relatively quickly, assume that but it sounds like it give the give users the ability to preview messages how does that prioritization conversation go uh, that's a good question like the smart choice would be to ignore the new feature and push forward on in-app messages what i will probably do is at least give it a try and see if i can do it within half a day or so mm -hmm. And then I just probably build it and ship it. Yeah. Yep. I, I mean, I would for sure, like I would challenge that assumption of the smart, the smart choice would be to push through on in-app messaging. Just, just because you've, just because you've been working on it doesn't mean you should, you should continue to. That, well, that's, that's a good point. Um, but I think like one of my problems, and I think a lot of developers share that is, um, losing focus and being distracted by shiny things. Okay. And the ability to build this new feature is a shiny thing that might distract me from the more important task of finishing this big feature. Yeah. So there's a balance there yep. that you have to figure out. And yeah, we, as I said, if it's a quick win, then I'll probably just do it. If it takes me more than a day, then I'll probably drop it and yeah. focus on the other thing first. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is uh, this is why I am actually I'm a fan of deadlines um, and and dates. And I know that like there are different camps on this, but I I I don't know. I found a lot of value in even if even if they are arbitrary and you know whether it's you pick two weeks or you pick six weeks or or what. Even if it's somewhat arbitrary, what it what it does is it forces you to have another conversation with yourself in the future about yeah. okay where am i at on this thing am i done yes or no if not why not um and you just have to re-argue for it so um i guess that, that leads me to ask like on uh on in-app messaging now like where are you feeling gosh like I, what, what what's the what was the conversation like with with you on on getting it shipped or rethinking how you've been trying to implement it or what's what's all that like? Um, I think it's still the the thing we should do next, um, yeah. and we had conversations about it at Microsoft as well. Yeah, um, it's such an opportunity uh, in terms of distancing ourselves and the product from other products. It also yeah. moves us a little bit closer to Intercom, um, but like. It's a clear advantage over, I don't know, ConvertKit, for example, or uh -huh. Drip, because uh -huh. they just don't have that part of the of the tooling. Yep. And it would, well, yeah. Who knows? Maybe it's also one of the stupid decisions, and it doesn't move the needle in any way. Um, but it sounds like a good new marketing opportunity. It might be a good good occasion for another product hunt launch, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. yeah, stuff like that. It's it's a major new thing, and. People are requesting it, so there are a yeah. couple of people of our customers who who would like to use something like that. Yeah. So I think we just continue working on it. Got it. So with the and with the the breakthrough that you've had, you're closer to that now. 
Yeah. Right. Is there is there a version of it that you can imagine that you could ship in one week? Um, it will be a very crappy version. Okay. What about two weeks? And I'm not entirely sure if I if I want to do that. Yeah. No, I for two sure. Weeks? Like, I mean, at at a certain point on this spectrum, the answer is no. Like, could you ship something by yeah. the end of the day? Absolutely not. Could you ship something yeah. in a week? Yes, but it would be very detrimental to the brand. Cool. Yeah. Two weeks. Well, let me let me backtrack a little bit. I <laughs> I did a lot of experimenting beforehand, and I already have like two or three working or had maybe they don't work anymore, but I had working prototypes. Um, but none of them were at a stage where I would feel confident to deploy them into production and okay. roll it out to everyone because of the because of the user experience or because of the um, back end. They're they're too brittle on the back end. They are too brittle on the back okay. end. It was like for the most part, everything I tried so far was a quick and dirty hack. Yes. Yeah. And something's going to really wake you helpful. up at two a.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. Uh, it it would probably not scale. It would have some weird implications. And I don't know. I I used to be faster building f- new features in user list, but like I've been working on this for one and a half years almost, and uh, I get a lot more careful these days mm-hmm. when making changes. And that's why it takes a lot of time because mm-hmm. sometimes I'm just sitting there for an hour contemplating up uh, different solutions and their pros and cons and potential implications on other parts of the system. Mm-hmm. And that's just, yeah, that's, that's why it takes so long these days because maybe I'm too worried about breaking things or doing things in the wrong way and mm-hmm. then basically making my life uh, harder in the, in the future. Um, but I guess, yeah, that's just how it is right yeah. now. Well, no, I mean, there's like, it's a it's a smart thing to do future you a solid by <laughs> not yeah by, by not delivering something that you know is going to break. I think what I'm what I'm trying to what I'm trying to pin you down on a little bit is like um, commit on a date. <laughs> yeah, not and, and 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 again, like I freely and openly admit that setting date setting a date is fully arbitrary. Yeah. Um, that part of it is, but there's so much value in saying, this is my target. This is what I'm shooting for. And these, these are the bounds within which I think I can reach that goal. And yeah. as opposed to, you know, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to continue to work on right now. Like, okay, what, why and for how long and when is it yeah. done? Nothing's yeah. ever really done. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Um, I, I totally get what you're saying. And maybe there's a point where, where I feel like comfortable committing on a date and um, it like with that refactoring a lot of like the mess got a lot less messier and yeah. it's a lot more i mean there's a clear path forward and uh, that's that, good that would make it easier to to estimate and to commit on something mm-hmm. are you are you able to um release features to certain customers but but not, yeah, but not we, to others. Like, do you have that like feature yeah. flag availability? Yeah, we have a feature flag system in place, uh-huh. and we definitely use it for this. Like, <laughs> the first one to use it will be will be no ourselves. Yeah, slowly you roll it out to people and then tweak it. And I really really want to want to get a first version rolled out to at least ourselves and maybe one or two customers in the next couple of weeks. But like looking at the last couple of weeks. Um, it's so hard to to estimate how much time I would actually have to work on this. Yeah, it makes it incredibly hard to commit on a date. I no doubt. Yeah, when y'all um, when y'all first announced um, the launch and you had a good little splash on Product Hunt and folks were reaching out, um, some some people who were reaching out were investors. Is that is that a conversation that's happening with, with y'all? Um, we like had we had. One conversation with an investor, but well, we were upfront with them that we were not thinking about taking on yeah. that kind of investment. Yeah, tiny seed applications open tomorrow. I, maybe, I know. We, yeah, maybe we will apply. Um, but yeah, okay, we we'll have to see. Yeah, but okay, but there's there's there is not like the sense of with you know time time is time is a limited resource here. Let's get ourselves some more time by raising some money and giving ourselves that kind of margin. Um, there's the th- this thought about going full time at least for a while. Yeah, like uh, really spending more time 
on the on the product yep. and on marketing and all the other activities. And I guess we are going to do that, but we have to also still figure out when and how. Totally. But okay. Yep. The just the uh, the promise of just being able to focus on <sighs> one thing. Yeah. That sounds so I, delightful. I know. <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> yeah. And things are like things are moving in a good direction um i finished like a consulting project like one of my projects is definitely done and i don't have to think about it anymore mm -hmm. that's already a big change um the other one at least this project with that customer is coming to an end so there's nothing on my side that i sh will have to do it's just you know, like they merging the changes and deploying into production and sure hopefully nothing breaks mm -hmm. but like just like taking off stuff on the to-do list and I'm um, getting rid of uh, more commitments on the side. Yeah. It's helping a lot and freeing up my headspace, being productive and user list. Yeah. 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 That's, that's how it is on my side. <laughs> what, what have you been up to in the last couple of uh, days, not weeks? Uh, well, first, the first thing I want to say is uh, thanks to TJ at standard code. Um, if you're listening, I got this really cool <laughs> message DM on Twitter from tj who is like hey stumbled across slow and steady randomly through the magic of the internet and uh slow and steady is like their company mantra and so they have these little patches mm. did he read did he reach out to you i, I sent him no. your okay i sent him your email address and said hey throw this over to benedict as well so they um they, they're they're yeah their mantra is slow and steady and he was like yeah. hey we had these patches made up do you want one <laughs> yes of course <laughs> Nice. We've <laughs> um, got a backpack for that to go on. Um, so that was that was pretty fun. Uh, pretty pretty cool. But let's see. I think um, yeah. On my side, I uh, got a got a little bit more uh, progress made on on the onboarding flow for the uh, like the Slack um, integration for this like uh, team team check in thing around core. Uh, you know, core, core activities that tend to ward off loneliness and isolation and um, among remote remote employees. And so you you were getting some inadvertent messages in our Slack <laughs> in our Slack workspace, um, uh, because there's some bugs uh, that I'm I'm working through uh, myself and with the developer. And um, so uh, yeah, my 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 goal was to have that like done and, and dusted like by, by today. Um, it is very close. And so, um, my either, either tomorrow or Friday, I'm, uh, regardless of the state that it's in, I'm going to record a couple of screencasts, um, and start to start to see if I can find some folks to, to install it into their, into their workspaces. Ideally very small, like, um, so, like very personal kind of teams set up uh not anything where there would be no real hr implications uh mm -hmm. if if there are some permissions things that that slip up uh you know at this point so like really really low key um but that's my that's that's the goal um there's still i i feel i definitely feel like 80 percent comfortable with oh okay cool this is how you this is how slack application talking to a, a node app like works um whereas before i had like only a, an abstract concept of okay I'm, i bet i'll bet you that this is what happens and it is now i kind of understand a bit bit of the code but there's still 20 percent of this so it's like uh, i'm kind of in the dark there so um i want to get a better understanding of of those pieces of the app um uh, scheduling a video conference with the developer to basically take two hours to to walk me through you know, some some bits of that um so that's feeling that's feeling good uh and let's yeah and you, you mentioned you mentioned tiny seed applications opening up that is definitely so you're th thinking about the playing as well i i can say i am 100 percent um applying um whether or not nice. like this is i mean i don't it doesn't have any and so i think that's a major strike um but uh yeah i think i i think um what do I want to say here? Yeah, I, I maybe maybe different from the majority of folks in the bootstrap and makerspace. I had a really good experience working for a, a VC backed company, a startup. Mm -hmm. I mean, traditional VC, um, tech stars company, uh, Foundry Group here in Boulder is like the you know the the biggest VC group in Boulder. Um, and I mean, 
we were <laughs> we were able to have a a good team of talented people working on uh, our idea full time, and we experienced yeah. an enormous amount of progress and success. Um, and so, like, I completely agree about all of the downsides of VC. You're not going to get a disagreement from me there. We just did not experience most of those. Mm. Um, and uh, and it could be that we were the outlier. All good. Get it. Um, but, uh, but, but the idea of saying, hey, investor, in exchange for X percent of my company, I, I'm going to take some money and then I'll work on it full time. Cool. Like, yes, that, that is... That is such a legit and valid concept, in my opinion. Um, yeah. And uh, especially if you don't also sign up for growth at all costs, the moment that we take seed investment, we're signing up for a Series A. Like, okay, cool, yeah, those things suck. Don't do those. Yeah, um, yeah. And and find a different model. So that's why, like, to me, the idea of trying to get my trying to get this business into a position to be attractive to a fund, like. Um, mm. tiny seed earnest or indie like no no brainer for, um, mm. so anyway that's where all that's at yeah yeah interesting I'm still I said this before but I'm still not 100% sure about taking on on outside money because I don't I feel like we don't really absolutely need it yeah yeah but but then again having some more money and not going through my savings uh, yeah. is also kind of appealing so yeah i think that's what that what what that's what makes it in theory we could go on without ever taking on outside funding right but would we be more willing to spend money on stuff hmm. well that's me after buying an expensive domain name <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but yeah I, I know i don't know i guess um what I was trying to say is it's easier to spend money that's allocated to the business already than it is to go into your personal saving and yeah, basically yeah. spend that money on yourself and right. pay rent from that, and get food uh, without ever seeing, without ever earning money by, uh, by your day job, mm -hmm. which unfortunately right now we're not paying us anything. <laughs> Userless is not paying you anything. Not right. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And right. I mean, there are, you know, and there are definitely a couple of different ways to go about it. Um, yeah. I, I am, I am just, I am yearning for the ability to focus full time. And, yeah. uh, and so, yeah, that, that means that I, <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm gonna, yeah, it, 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 I, gosh, I, I just need, <laughs> just thinking through so many different things right now, but like I, from time to time, you know, I have conversations and, and you just see enough examples of folks who bootstrapped their side business into a full-time thing. Um, and it definitely, it definitely can work. It can definitely. Yeah. Um, but the, the trade-off is, you know, trade-off often is time. Um, and, or, you know, some degree of sacrifice of, of, uh, of health, family relationships, Mm, or yeah, uh, or 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 your primary business. Um, <laughs> well, I, mean, I could that, focus yeah. on this full time if I was willing to just stop making money consulting. Um, yeah. So yeah. The other, the, I guess the the other thing I that I am trying to figure out is uh, what I what I really need is time, not money. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's what yeah. the money is literally buying is time. Uh, and so if if I were able to figure out some ways to this is what I'm still struggling with, like find a ways to do more efficient, higher paying work in my consulting practice. Oh, cool. Okay, great. Then yeah, I would prefer to keep that 10 or 15% of my business, my, of my startup, um, you know, for future, uh, for the future, if I'm able to work you know, 20 hours doing consulting, making what I'm, you know, making right now, working 30 something, 40 hours. Well, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, yeah. That is, <laughs> I don't know, man, that's, that's something <laughs> that is often promised. And I think, I think really achieved behind it, honestly. Yeah. But I guess like the problem with consulting is uh, giving away time for money, and mm -hmm. that only works to a certain degree when you you are limited with your time. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and just the, like even if you just do a little bit, the the additional focus that requires, or or not focus that requires that focus that it takes away from your main thing, like your side business, um, it's just insane like mm -hmm. it makes it so much harder even if it's just a little bit it's just one more thing to consider every every week or every day right 
And I feel like that's that's the hardest part right now. I'm with you. Well, um, let's see. Okay, last last topic, and then we can wrap it up. Um, I I have been feeling like I've been feeling this pull to mix up the format a little bit. The podcast format. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I yeah. Th- let's not talk about in it messages every week. <laughs> well, I mean, no, no, for sure. I mean, like, not mixing up the the idea of, hey, Benedict, what's happening with your uh, SaaS product and with your consulting practice, Brian? What's happening with your like that? That is cool. That's fine. I I'm saying like I'm feeling a need to to introduce some sort of structure or framework around here. Here is a declared goal. Um, here are like updates to it. This is where it stands. Hey, last week we talked about this. I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I have I have nowhere to go. You with want that other? Go ahead. You want this to be more of a mastermind? Ha! <laughs> huh. Yeah, that is definitely the structure of my new mind group. <laughs> um, I and I think I oh, don't. Gosh, yeah, I don't. Okay, that's we can we can leave it there. Um, and if people want to want to say what they think about that, feel free. The, because the, the flip side of it, man, is that um, is that f- I mean, fairly regularly, people are like, "Hey, enjoying the podcast." I think it's getting better over time. Like people are saying that, so mm-hmm. it could just be me feeling restless and and antsy as I am, you know, prone. I, I am I am susceptible to <laughs> to, to, to yeah, that sort yeah, of feeling yeah. of just like wanting to you know mix it. Up. I'm I worried a little bit that it will be too boring to listen to the same conversation every week when we don't have exciting news to share like okay today there was something exciting but i mean in a week maybe not maybe i'm not making any progress on mm-hmm. anything meaningful and then will be this, you questioning me why i didn't make enough progress <laughs> <laughs> well i mean i i so i think that there are definitely things that to, de- there are things to be learned from those sorts of conversations no doubt there is like, true okay whether whether or not it's it's fascinating to like a second or third degree of relationships of people who know us like i think that that's i think that that's what i'm feeling a push towards is in order for it to be to offer a lot of value to people who are not also running in the exact same circles like mm. knowing us personally or knowing people that we know personally Yep. I don't know. I just want like I'm feeling like a little bit of mix it up a bit. So that's that's all I I just want to throw that out there. Okay. Yeah, we we could pre- maybe think about new formats and things we could change until next week and then discuss a couple. Yeah. Yeah. And see what see what folks think. Okay. Yeah. That would be um, interesting. Um what what else? Anything else at all? No. I think that that that's about it. Cool. I think we is it's already a long episode yeah so let's, all right let's wrap it okay show notes at slow and steady podcast.com you can follow us on twitter at slow steady pod yep and we're looking forward to hear from you uh we welcome all suggestions about the format and what we could change later cool. see you